And let's stay with the group of five guys now, and let's talk about this upcoming 2024 football season. And the big carrot, obviously, here for these group of five teams is the 12-team playoff race that's coming up here that's dotting the schedule and opens up the door for these college football group of five teams to crash the party with a team or two. Uh, the questions I have to ask here coming into this is, which teams with the toughest power conference schedules coming in here, when you begin to separate these teams, which teams realistically have a chance to crash the party? And you can do so by starting out looking at their toughest power conference schedules. The good teams with the biggest concerns to me would be Coastal Carolina for one. Uh, if for no other reason, they're going to face bowl teams in each of the last eight games this football season here. They're going to close out with a really, really tough schedule. And it's a type of a time of the season when they really can't afford to lose a football game. So keep an eye on a team like Coastal Carolina and how they perform down the stretch. You've got Fresno State who opens and closes the season at Michigan and at UCLA. So everything in between for Fresno State is going to have to be can't miss because they're likely to lose both of those football games. So they're going to have to not make a mistake, everything in between for Fresno State this year. I talked about James Madison last year, a football team that went backwards in the stats, improved their record. They're going to take on six of their last seven opponents are going to be bold teams this year. You've got a Memphis football program here. that Four of their five games are going to be at bowl sites, teams that were in bowl games last year. And one other quick comment looking at the schedule here, Toledo, Tony mentioned the MAC conference being as weak as it is, and it really is a weak conference. And Toledo almost always seems to emerge out of that conference. But they're not going to be a very good football team this year. I know all the preseason pubs are going to have Toledo as the top team or top one or two teams. But take a look and look inside their numbers here, guys. They've only got eight returning starters coming back, and they rank number 122 overall in returning production. I think there's holes for Toledo. It's a football team, I think, that will not be even in the talk when it comes to be college football playoff with these group of five football programs. Andy Isco, your take on what some of these group of five teams might be looking at from a schedule strength of point of view. I don't necessarily look uh, in an overview at the strength of schedule coming into the season because I think that's uh, a little bit more valuable for people who want to make future plays and see how the uh, uh, the schedule is going to play out. So I more take a look at the schedule strength as it unfolds during the season because some of the teams – that were really strong at the start of uh, this year may fade, and more importantly, teams that did not have great expectations. I mean, uh, we talked, I think Greg mentioned New Mexico State last year. They ended up having a, a very strong season uh, compared to uh, not only what was expected of them, but compared to their uh, past history. But I do take a look, for example, you mentioned Coastal Carolina. They just have an average, in addition to the tough schedule that uh, uh, that they have as far as the number of uh, uh, bowl teams that they face, they have uh, about a modest, maybe slightly below average number of returning starters and returning production. So I could see a team like that. Their pedigree suggests that they should be a, a, a very good year, even though their coach is just in his second season there. Uh, they, uh, you know, the, the one thing I, I am a little concerned about is that their record has declined in each of the last few years, but it's still good enough to uh, be eight and five in the coach's first year. And in his second year, very often the coach has more players. He's more familiar with the culture around the program, and he's able to show some improvement. So I could see Coastal Carolina struggling, but perhaps exceeding expectations when measured by record against the uh, uh, point spread. Uh, for another example, you talked about Toledo. Yeah, Toledo does not return a lot, but there's a team, again, with a pedigree of a good, solid program in what Tony has indicated, maybe uh, uh, the weakest or next to the weakest conference amongst the, uh, uh, the group of five, which suggests to me that Toledo will be able to show its improvement as the recruiting talent assimilates into the limited returning talent. And there's a team you know, I look for a team that perhaps because they do have this reputation as being overpriced early in the season because of what is returning or more accurately what's not returning. And then as they show improvement because of the quality of their recruiting, which is generally one, two or three within the uh, MAC conference itself, show, you know, disappoints their backers early in the season, which makes for a good second half of a run. I don't remember exactly what the year it was. It was maybe five or six years ago, maybe just a year or two before pre-COVID, you know, before COVID, when Miami of Ohio, I want to say they started the season 0-6 and, and then won their last six games. That's the situation or that's the kind of situation I look for as a season unfolds. Teams that struggle early and then 
uh, all of a sudden you can see slight improvement, and then it's not yet reflected in the win-loss record, but it is reflected in the point spread record because, A, they've disappointed their backers, and even if they haven't disappointed their backers, they've shown to be a weak point spread team when a team like that generally has a reason for showing a slow start and then uh, re and then, and then making progress uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the second half of the season.